Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So we're going to do a colouring today with the beautiful Castle Art Gold set of pencils that was so kindly sent by Kelly. They're no longer in here. They are, let me just put the tin out of the way, in the beautiful case that she sent me to store them in. I hope you can pick up on the shimmer. There's like, in the centre, there's like little glittery bits. I don't know if you can pick that up. But yeah. They're all stored, of course, I've got it upside down in this beautiful case that I was sent. So, thank you so much to everybody that left a comment, and I have looked and read them all, for which colouring book you'd like out of a, the choice of three. Overwhelmingly spooky one by Sarah says I don't know how to pronounce it. I think I did attempt it, but um, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous book. It is single-sided but you do have a little bit of a story on here. So what I am gonna do is we're gonna use two Ahuhu alcohol markers. You don't need to have them. My hands are struggling. So for the bigger spaces on the page, I'm gonna use a, a base. So I'm just gonna put the alcohol marker down as a base just to help me out. Um, so I did say that I might have to cheat because I was so desperate to color with these pencils. So I did do a little cheat. Only a little one, folks, just a, a snipsy one. I'm sure you can let me off with that. I did this page, just the front cover, the little crow sitting on the broomstick. I just wanted to test the pencils out. So um, there's a little bit of glitter on there, a little bit of purple in there. But yeah, so anyway, enough waffle from me. The page I chose was the, <coughs> excuse me, witch's hat with the dragon fast asleep on it. So there is quite a big space on the um, to colour on the witch's hat. And my hands are not feeling it today. So like I say, I am just going to baste with um, an alcohol marker. I have got paper behind and then I've got a piece of plastic acetate. Um, it's a thick piece, but it doesn't matter. As long as it's non-porous, it's not going to go through your page. So um, I just want to protect the book. So I'm just putting those behind and that paper will just help... Um, my alcohol markers spread out a little bit better so it doesn't sit and pull on the um, paper. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. So, the first colour I have got is, is this is from the, um, uh, I can't remember what they're called, the usual oval ones. This is from the um, 320 set, but I do believe the colours I've picked out are from the pastel set. So if you have the, a Hoo Hoo pastel set, you could also baste yours too. So I'm going to do the hat in purple. And then the dragon's going to be green and yellow. Sort of traditional colours. And then we can do golds and um, oranges for the flowers. Maybe a little bit of red for the um, mushrooms at the top. We'll see. So I thought that it would be really good Halloween-y picture. So... I'm going to take my trusty alcohol marker and I'm just terrified of ruining this book because it is so beautiful. Um, right, let's just go for it, Lucy. Stop your wiffle waffle and get on with it. So you could use paint. You could use water-based markers. You could, if you're struggling and you want to fill the background in first so you don't have to work quite so hard with your pencils to get that coverage... Um, you could use whatever. I know water-based markers are streaky, but if you go over them with pencil, um, they, you know, that pencil covers up a myriad of sins, folks. So just the paper likes the alcohol marker. Let's keep that edge moving. I'm just going to switch sides on the nib just so I can get around these little leafy bits. Now if you read the story as you go through the book, the witch, our little witch cat, um, grows all sorts of plants and things to make her potions in her garden. So these plants do not have to look real. It's a fantastic fantasy book that we can thoroughly enjoy and colour it however you want to. So I was a bit sad that we didn't get to do Be Jasmine Beckett Griffith, so uh, maybe I'll come to that. I don't know. We'll see how things pan out. 
I have still got her on my pile. And um, since it's spooky season, I haven't coloured in that book, which is just a criminal. Um, I might, I'm just going to run that over because that's going to leave... It's just going to leave a streaky line, so I'm just going to pull that out. There we go. And then we've got all down here. I've got to do all this. So doing this by pencil is completely possible, but very hard work. So I'm just going to do this bit till I can stop and then I'll show you the colour for the dragon and then I'll go off and do it and make sure it's completely dry before I come back. If you are doing a base like me with whatever medium you're going to use make sure it is thoroughly dry before putting pencils on it because you'll tear your paper up even good quality paper even watercolor paper you would tear it up so we don't want that so you have to make sure that it is completely dry so i'm just going to come up to this line and it looks dark now but it will dry um, a really lovely soft pastel purple and that I can use to my advantage for our highlights. Let me just change the tip to go around his little claws. Isn't he the cutest little dragon? There, now the rest of it is dragon so I'm not going to colour it all with alcohol markers with you on camera because it's just boring when we've got a lot of pencil work to do. So the colour I have got, did I tell you that colour? I don't think I did. It is V889 Rain Flower Purple. And this one is, I keep using this one and I can never pronounce it. I'll hold it up, but it, well I won't because it makes the screen go blurry. It's G796 Megan, I don't know. <laughs> um, I will put it on screen as usual. So let's get our little dragon. I'll just do, let's do his bottom jaw just so you can see what a pale, beautiful colour it is. And then I'll go off and do the rest of off camera and have it dry and we'll get started with our pencils. So please don't worry if you don't have the alcohol markers and you want to follow along. Um, the pencils that I'm using will be absolutely fine. You don't need them. It's just that my hands are hurting and I need that just to fill up the big spaces. The rest I'll do all with pencil. All right then, my lovely friends, I'm going to go and finish the hat, finish the, all the dragony bits, and then we will meet back up. I'll see you in a second. OK, it's all dry. Aren't they beautiful colours? An opposite on the colour wheel, so they'll go really well together. So let's start, shall we, with the hat. It'll give me a chance to think about any more details that I'd like to add to our little dragon here. I did notice on the front cover that her dragon is, isn't he beautiful? Blues, he's really beautiful. Too late now, folks. Okay, so I've got four colours. Um, from dark to light, I have Mulberry, um, Purple Lake Deep, I have Purple Lake, and then I have um, Venetian Blue. No, that's wrong, sorry. Venetian Blue, then Purple Lake in that order. They'll be on the screen anyway, so I'm just going to come in a tiny bit. There we go. I hope that's close enough. It should be. So I'm going to start with our darkest, which is unusual for me, but I am. So it's Sarah, isn't it? Or Sarah. Sarah, or Sarah, it depends on how she pronounces it, I suppose, has given us shadow lines, so we know where to put our dark bits. So I'm going to use that to my advantage. So, I am going to go in here with our darkest, which is Mulberry. And because they're oil based, I'm going to do it lightly and then build the colours up. So, I'm going to put that dark right in there. So, I'm just light pressure so that we can get more colours in. Okay, that's our first colour. Mulberry. Then we're going in with Purple Lake Deep. Now these are very similar colours, these two. Especially when they're side by side like this. It's just a subtle more... Um, this one has a subtle bit more blue, is what I'm trying to say. Got my words out finally. 
Okay, I'm going to bring that up there. Okay, I'm going back to our darkest. How's the shadow in here? I can just I want you to turn the light a little bit. Um, is that any better? It's still going to have shadow because it is, I don't know if you can hear, well, I doubt you can hear, but it is tipping down with rain. We've got a storm coming. There is a red weather warning for Scotland. So, um, Audrey, if you're watching, keep yourself safe, my darling. Um, red weather warning, yeah, for rain. So this is our dark. And I'm going in, and as usual, I just sort of feather out the edge so that I can blend the next colour in. So I'm going to bring that right up. So I've got my window open because I'm now back in my, my tranquil little cave. And I can have the window open without that hideous traffic. It was driving me mad, folks. I know some people enjoyed it, listening to the cars in the background, but um, it drove me dis insane. When you come into your your colouring zone, well, when I come into my colouring zone, I just want a bit of peace. I don't want to be hounded by traffic. You know, you live by it all the time. It's nice to be able to escape. So out the front, we've got a main road, and out the back, I've got a woods. It's just, you know, couldn't have two more contrasting areas really okay so I'm just filling in all the dark bits this paper's lovely and they're quite soft they feel quite soft so I'm having to tell myself just to sort of lessen off the pressure. For oil pencils they're really soft. There we go, that's that bit. Right, so let's go into our other colour. So I'm going to take the second colour now, which is Purple Lake Deep, and start to bring that out. I'm going to keep the shape that we've made why is that? It's probably just because it is so dark. There we go. That might be a bit better. What I need is this strip light like suspended above me so that... Although it's not too bad. So I'm just going to bring that out. Keeping the shape that we've made. because then we can go in with our other colours. And there's two more, so like I said to you, don't worry about if you don't have the alcohol markers, you'll be able to just do this without. If ever I'm colouring and I use a different, um, just use a base, I will always try to match it so closely that you could colour without using it. Yes, they're really very nice pencils. Seem to be blending well. Are they shiny? No, you don't usually get that with oil pencils, do you? Uh, that shine like you get with a high waxy pencil, high wax content pencil. And not as shiny. You do get shine, but not as much. Okay. So before I go in with the other colours, we're going to have to do the dark up this side. So we've kind of made our creases where the hat sort of flops over. So now we're going in and filling these ones in. So behind this plant. Sorry, that's my hand seizing up.
yeah so thank you to everybody that voted it was a shame that because there was a lot of people that wanted Jasmine Beckett but this just stole the show so we may have to um we may have to sneak in another one maybe we could sneak in a Jasmine Beckett before the spooky season's over and then I want to really want to do that um the Camilla Dierico one you know the little hair the one that was um just just hair <laughs> the little creature that just looked like hair I really want to color that one I think we might have to crack out the ink tense pencils we haven't used ink tense since I've been doing the budget pencil series we haven't used ink tense since we did the Kirby page in his new um what's the book called Oh, Lucy, your brain. Alien worlds. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, so we haven't, I haven't used ink tents, I don't think, and since then. I don't know, I could be wrong. But now we've got that 100 set of ink tents, I would like to use them again. They are gorgeous. Right. One sec. Sorry about that. Okay, so um, we're going to go in with Purple Lake now. And we're going to start to bring that out. Again, following the shape that we've built. So we're going to bring that up into that very pale colour that we've got. Now I could stop there, but I'm going to use a third pencil. Um, which is a little more blue, but it looks so cool. And it just gives us that nice highlight. Okay, I'm trying to do it so that I don't get in your way so much. Right, we're going to bring out... We will go back over all this. It's not going to stay scruffy like that. Um, I'm going to start to bring out these dark bits now. And I'm going to leave a little bit for our palest colour. Just so those creases really show up. So I've used the darkest purples I could find in the set. We might be able to deepen them up even further if we need to. With like... I think we could even try a little bit of black if we need to. But we'll see when we've gone over it. Okay, let's leave out that like that for now and then go in with our very palest, which is uh, Venetian Blue. I'm struggling to see properly in this light. It's blinding me. It said burns my retinas. <laughs> so that's a lot darker than... Um, have I got that right the right way round? What number is that? Yeah. Yeah, so if you don't have a base, that Venetian blue is your palest colour. Sometimes they, you know, if you get a pencil and it feels scratchy, I think you get they get stuff stuck on them and then so I just scribble it on a piece of paper and it stops that. Okay, All right, let's give that a brush off. I'm going to have to turn that light round because it is literally blinding me. I don't think that... Uh, hell. I've got strip light vision now. <laughs> right, that's better. I can see what I'm doing. Okay. So let's go back in and deepen up our really dark areas with our darkest pencil. Well, that seems to be doing the trick, doesn't it, folks? So they seem to layer okay. I'm going to do this bit darker. I'd missed that out. Apologies. Miss that out. So that's the dark colour, and then we'll go in with the next darkest colour in there. So 
So there is a subtle difference between the two. Okay, let's deepen that up. Yep, so they're layering up nicely. Look at that, working really well. So what have you all been colouring? Have you been doing Halloween pages or can't you be bothered with it? It's nice, um, I never like really considered myself a seasonal colourist but um, I think I probably am, you know. Yes, yeah, so tell me, what have you all been colouring? I love reading the comments. I know I'm not um, great at answering all of them. I do try to get to you all, but um, it's very hard you know, when you've got other things going on. But I do read them all. So yeah, let me know. Give me ideas. We've got lots and lots of books that um, that um, need colouring in, I have folks. People are so generous and lovely in this community um, and I'd like to pay that generosity back by colouring in the books but it's hard isn't it to get round them all. So I'm just working through the pencils again and just building up that colour. Again I'm not pressing hard because we've got, although the paper's great I don't know how the pencils will respond, how many layers they'll give us and all that kind of jazz. So I'm just being a little cautious and being gentle. Okay. Really acknowledging those creases in the hat. There we go, all right, that's that one. Then our, our purple lake, let's bring that out. Can fill in any gaps here then. We'll bring that. And this is the point where we're just tidying up really. We've set out our, we've mapped out where we want our colours, and this is the tidy up time. So deepening up, tidying up any blends, making things make sense. So like there, I needed more colour there. There we go. I need more here. And then if you just sort of step back and have a look, you can see where you need more colour. So, there we go. Right, now I'm going to go back in with our very palest, which is that Phoenician blue, and just lightly put that in. And it just gives us that it's got a scratchy bit on there. Yeah, go away. I'm just going to scribble it on that piece of paper. There we go. Give it a bit of a brush off. They're not crumbling so much on this paper either. Maybe it's because I'm colouring really lightly with them. But when I swatched them, because I go from hard to light, there was quite a bit of crumble. If we go back with that um, purple lake, we kind of get that. It's making that sort of natural highlight, that natural sort of where the lights caught it, which is really cool. And that's just by following the dark lines that Sarah has given us. There we are. And then you can just keep going until your heart is content. Right, so we want Purple Lake Deep is our darkest, isn't it? So, just going to make sure. Oh, they're really filling up now. Look at that. That's awesome. Yeah, so I'm just going to make sure I've got it as dark as I possibly can. Like I say, we could go in with black. 
if we want it even deeper and then go back with purple but I think we'll do the rest of the page first and then we can have a look and see if it needs it but we could put it in those really those really dark shadowy spots we could do that What do you think folks? Now we've got it all to do here with the hat. <coughs> with the rest of the hat rather. <laughs> so exactly the same. We're going to go from dark here where the lines are. We're going to put lines up there with our dark and then the rest of that will be light. Around his feet is dark. A little bit round the bottom here where the lines are and then we're going to have the light in there. So. Um, I'm just trying to see. Should we do this bit together? If we do this bit, then you can. I'm sure you better work that out. Let's see. Right. So I need purple lake deep. Let's start with that. And we're going to go in here, and again lightly. So we're going to map out where our colours need to go. So we need to bring that up a little bit. Definitely up here, and I'm going to join those. And then feather it out so that we can add the next colours in. Like that. I'm just going to twizzle you around a bit. Then I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to follow that line and bring that out a bit. Okay, right, bring that up just a tad further. It's up to you. I mean, it, 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 it's whether you feel satisfied with it, isn't it? You know, how far you go with these, um, the deeper lines and things. I don't want to ruin it, but I could put, just trying to turn the book around. I could put some black in just to show you what that would look like, the difference. I'm sure most of you were aware, but I have had some new subscribers which is really lovely who are new colorists so it's always lovely to have new people and that's why I always continue to explain what I'm doing as much as I can so that people understand and can follow if they want to so I hope you can see my hand's not in the way too much. That's why I try not to zoom in so close anymore. Because um, of how I have to hold the pencil, it makes it easier for you to see, hopefully. Okay, just lightly bringing that out so we can put that other colour in. And we've got dark here. And don't forget we can go back so we don't need to put a few more in ourselves. There we go. Like that. And I might just add a bit of a subtle one in there. And if I don't like it, we can cover it up. But there. Okay, next colour is Mulberry. So then we do what we did before, go back in with the Mulberry and we bring that out. Okay. I'm trying to leave a little bit in the, in between the creases, otherwise they won't look like creases, it will just be filled up. And they won't just look like they won't look like folds in the hat anymore. And like I did before, we will go back over this. So this is just me put placing colours where I want it. So now I'm going in with mul no mul not mulberry, is it? No. Which have I looked? It's Purple Lake. So we'll go in with that now. Okay. 
And this is where it becomes more bluey, so we get that sort of contrast of light on there. Put it in there where it's going to be dark. And we'll bring that up to there. So the only spaces left when you've put this colour in will be where you want your highlights. So, and I'm rubbish at knowing where shadows and things go. I'm terrible at it. But I just look at it and I think, does it look nice? It's a cartoon page, it's a fantasy page. Does it look nice? Or are you looking at it and thinking that's, you know, ridiculous? Well, it's all objective, subjective, isn't it? It's, you know. Um, okay, Phoenician blue. Yeah, so we don't have to be experts at light and shadow. Just what do you, what do you feel looks good? This pencil definitely has a scratchy bit on it. I don't want to resharpen it now because you know you get that flat edge which helps you. Okay, which helps you colour more smoothly when you're a flat edge. Um, right, darkest colour. Go back in. It's going to take a long time, I'm sorry folks. I am going to have to go off camera in a minute, obviously going to finish this front bit, but rest my hands. Now, can you see why I put a base on this? Although, it's not a big picture, it's a big space to fill in by hand. And colouring pencils can be really hard work on your hands. I'm going to have to sharpen that, it's got a scratchy point on it. Let's do a couple of turns, see if that gets rid of it. I didn't notice any of them being scratchy when I was swatching. There you go, that's gone. Isn't that weird how sometimes they get that? What is it, do you think? Or do you know? If you do know, let me know. That would be helpful. It's very annoying. <laughs> Because, you know, you kind of wear that tip down and you get it to where it's working just how you want it. And then you have to sharpen it because you've got a scratchy bit. I didn't notice it at all. It's really weird. And it's back again. Well, maybe not. Bug on my page. How dare you invade my space. Okay, I am going to deepen up some more. Um, yeah, purple like deep. Um, and 
around here, I think. So this is what I'm saying. I am now playing because I'm just there's something about it that I'm just not happy with. I think it's this bit around here. It just doesn't, it's not blended like I want it to. So I'm going back in and playing until I'm happy. And because we've coloured lightly, you can keep doing that. Okay, I'll do the next one. It's feeling a bit better. Yeah, there was something over here that was just not sitting right, it didn't feel right. Okay. I think it's a big space to fill in, so it's a big space to um to get smooth and your blends done. But I think we'll get there. All right, and then in with the Venetian scratchy blue. <laughs> I don't think I fixed it. <laughs> okay, so at the moment I'm gonna leave it like that. And then if we wanna add black, which I might do at a later date, we can put it in just in the shadow areas. So I'm gonna go off and finish, well, I'm gonna rest my hands. It's going to get crampy. Um, I'm going to finish this bit and finish blending. So I'm not going to do anything different to the shape of the colours. The colours will stay as I've laid them out. But I'm just going to make it look a bit more smoother and, and finished. And I will at the top of the hat too. So when I've recovered <laughs> and um, I've finished, I'll come back to you. I'll see you in a sec. Okay, I haven't messed too much. I've just smooth the blends out basically. So now we have to look at our little dragon fellow. And I have got four colours here. So from darkest to lightest I have um, hooker's green, leaf green deep, um, cadmium green pale, leaf green light and then Tuscan yellow. And um, we're going to do the same as what we did for the hat. So we are going to follow Sarah's dark shading areas. Let's come in a little bit closer. And um, yeah, we're going to go from there. So which bit should we pick? Let, well, let's start here because we've got a good bit of shading. So using Hooker's Green, I'm going to go in and fill this dark bit in. So exactly the same as before. Bring it out gently so we can get the next colour in. And it's going to be dark around here. Again, I'm not going to do it light. I'm not going to do it heavy. I am colouring lightly. <laughs> Can't get my words out. There we go. Now I don't want to come up too dark with this because I want him to be quite bright. So, oh, and then we're going to have a really dark bit in here, look. I'm going to have to turn the page so that my hand doesn't get in the way and you can see. So this bit where his tail folds over, we're going to make that quite dark in there. And bring that round. Okay, let's leave it at that for a minute. Okay, let's go in with our next colour, which is Leaf Green Deep. So I'm just going to bring that out now. There are two darkest colours, then we start to get into the brights. So this is just our shadowy colours. I'm just going to bring that out softly. So we can always add more, but it's, it's harder to take it away. Darker colours, so 
we'll just put it in lightly. So everywhere we've gone with that dark, let's bring that curve round. Round there. Okay, let's go in with the next colour, which is um, Cadmium Green Pale. These are, now we start to get our bright colours come in now. So we'll pull that out there. Kind of keeping that, trying to keep that shape. There. And then, leaf green light. So here are our brights now. And then the yellow, we'll lift it even further. Is the last one before the yellow? Yeah, so I'm going to bring that up further because it's that beautiful sort of yellow green. And then we're going to take the Tuscan yellow and I'm putting that in too. So as you can see, I've gone over my um, over my alcohol marker. So if you didn't have them, it really honestly doesn't matter. Okay, so now we can start going back. I know there's a bit of shadow in there, but I don't think I'm going to put it in there. We'll see. So we'll start to fill in and deepen up our darker areas. I'm just working down the list again. And I was thinking we could put some sparkles on his scales and maybe on the smoke too coming out of his little nose. Okay, so I'm just working on going back over those colours. Smoothing that all out. Just forcing those blends by being really gentle, going back over. And our palest green. <coughs> Excuse me. It just forces that brightness in. Okay. That looks cool. Right, now is let's have a look at his face. So this bit under his chin. So I think we do the same. Let me get the colours right. So hooker's green at the bottom. Not so much though. Let's just put a little bit in. Just a little bit here. And then work our way up. But just a tiny bit of the dark. Let's keep him nice and bright, shall we? And then our leaf green. Then that yellow green, well, leaf green light. Which is a really lovely colour. Let's pop that in. And then fill in with our yellow. <laughs> Cute. Little street sleeping dragon. Okay. We'll do his face. So we've got a little bit of shadow under his eye. So we'll put that in. 
just, I'm just going to bring those colours down again in order. Just want a little bit. And what I'm going to do is pick out where I want the dark and then bring those colours out. Okay. So, we'll do a little bit. There's a little bit above here, look. A little tiny bit. Make that dark. So those first three colours I'm putting on here. There we are. Right, now this bit behind is really dark. So we'll go in with our, um, through the list again. I think we'll just use the first two colours for that. So hooker's green and leaf green deep. Let's just try that because it is shadowed and it's dark there. Okay. I haven't decided on what the little bits in between all his spike colours are going to be yet. So that's why I've left them blank. Right, let's do the rest of his, his little face. Okay, put my pencils back in order. So taking hooker's green again. I'm going to come round quite sparing with it I think come around with hooker's green we'll have a little bit up here maybe around his little nose make that bit a bit darker because it's behind okay next colour and just follow where we've already put our colour in Because although we want, I want him bright, um, it's those shadows that really sort of make the colouring stand out. All those dark parts that really sort of make the difference in the colouring. Okay, working through. So this is our third colour in the list. Then leaf green. Oh, leaf green light this is, sorry, do apologise. And then let's get that yellow in. So I'm going to put a little bit there. Around that nose, top of his mouth. And it really sort of changes that to an acidy green. Which is really cool. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> He's a cute little fellow. Okay, now we have to do the same here. So... I'm going to do a little bit of hooker's green around there, around his leg and at the base of his spines, just a tiny bit, like that. Oh, we need that bit dark. Okay, so we'll bring the next colour in. Just a little bit. Next colour. <laughs> Bring that up there. And on his eyelid. A little bit there. And then we're going to bring in the bright green. I'm going to fill that in. Round there. And then we can put some of that um, yellow on the eyelid. Okay. Let's push those colours together. <laughs> it's cute, isn't he? All right. His little feet. This one's going to be very dark, so hooker's green. And I think we'll just use those first three colours again. Hooker's green, leaf green deep. And then we'll just wedge a little bit of um, cadmium green pale on there. Just so we get that bright deep. I might put a little bit more in these of that. Cadmium green deep. There. Okay. 
Um, then this pull. Okay, so hooker's green in here. So I'm going to work through the list again. A little bit on the inside of that paw, or claw, even. Make it a bit deeper at the tip. There we go. Oh dear, okay. It was a Facebook friend request had popped up. No, thank you. <laughs> so I'm just filling that in. That one can be that's that's our third colour there. Just fill that in there because it's underneath him. And then we'll go in with our bright colours. Yeah, so I'm thinking a little bit of, maybe we could use the Mod Podge Extreme Glitter because it lays flatter, although this book is single sided so it won't really matter. Um, or, again, my favourite Diamond Stickles. We could pick some bits out to make him shiny. Right, so I'm going to go back with Hooker's Green now and just deepen up some of these bits. Where he needs to be darkest. Okay, a little bit more in there, I think. I don't want to faff about with him too much because I quite like how he's come out. So it's just smoothing out the blends again. Because if you're anything like me, you have to keep playing until you spoilt it. <laughs> and, and quite often I do that. Although I haven't practiced this page. I just went in, chose some colours and, um, and went with it. So, I'm very proud of myself. I need to trust myself more. Yeah, and that's something I find quite hard, but I think a lot of us do, don't we? Right, sip of tea. This video is going to be very long. Mind you, once we've done the dragon, these little parts won't take long to show you how to do. Um, and I'm not sure about the background, I was thinking maybe some pan pastels, I haven't used those for like ever. Right, here we go again, this bit, hooker's green in here. It needs to be dark under here. And we can see we can bring that out. Bring that out gently. Mind his little spines. There we go, next colour. Next colour. <laughs> I think you can see how this goes. And it's just building it up. So it's just gently doing it. Be happy with where you've put your colours. And then go back in and deepen it up. And then not forgetting that gorgeous I was going to say lemon then. It's Tuscan yellow. Because that changes that um, leaf green light. It makes it really acidic. It's really nice. It's really clever. Okay, there we are. Let's do um, this bit round here. Tiny bit of dark in there and there. And we'll do it up against the hat, a little bit of that hooker's green. And then work through our colours again. So 
So on his wing there, that'll be dark green and that'll be... Um, hmm. I think I'll do that dark green and then colour that. I don't know. We'll come to it. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> trying, to, trying to work it out as I sit here and do it, but it's not happening. Because I've left those blank. Those bits that I've coloured in with the alcohol marker need to match those, don't they, really? So, opposite of green on the colour wheel is red. I said purple earlier, it's not. Uh, red, we could do them red. And then we could do all these like earthy tones, that would might work. Okay, let's fill him in. I like him, he's really cute. I'm glad I did him green, because I, um, when I looked at the front cover, I was like, oh, the Hood Dragon's blue and it looks brilliant, but I really wanted the sort of Halloween-y colours really to show through. Okay, we're going to do... So, I'm going to follow the same rules, the same colours for this bit and this bit. Leave that bit because I haven't got a clue. If you're following me, I haven't got a clue at the moment. We well, can colour that in the dark, the three darkest colours, that bit behind. And then we'll, then we'll come back and I'll hopefully have a plan, folks. All right, my lovelies, give me a second. Right, so the majority of the dragon's done. Like I said, I've left that bit out until I can decide on what I want on the frills in here and his little spikes. I've left those out. So, um, I've got some colours here worked out. Not all of them, but I've got some. So I thought we'd look at this um, marigold type flower, daisy type flower. And I'm going to use oranges. And I've got, um, let me just make sure I've got this the right way around. Yes. I've got Brilliant Yellow, Naples Yellow, and then our beautiful Tuscan Yellow that we've used in the Dragon. Uh, let's go in and do the darker leaves first. So I'm using Brilliant Yellow. Uh, we're going to put that gorgeous orange in there and in these dark bits. Because these are behind, so they're going to be darker. Okay, then we're going to use uh, Naples Yellow, beautiful colour. We're going to leave a tiny bit at the tip for that, um, what colour is it? Tuscan Yellow, like that. And then, put a little bit of that in there. And then the other ones, we're going to do very similarly. I need to bring you in slightly, don't I? It's really hard to judge with this camera. Um, it's a different camera I'm using to what uh, I started YouTube with, and it's really hard to tell whether you're too close in or not. So I'm going in with our darkest, then our medium, and then we'll put that Tuscan yellow over the whole lot. So we've got our green, we've got our oranges going on. We're going to introduce some more sort of autumn colours too. These pencils have got a perfect combination for the mushroom stalks. I've decided the mushrooms are probably going to be traditional mushrooms. Because I like the idea of having a little bit of red in the page. So I've got a few things worked out, but I haven't worked out the colour of the stalk yet for this. Okay, so then we can deepen it up. Let's get that bright orange in there. Let's get that going. And then make sure we've got enough of that yellow. There we go. There we go. So that's that. <coughs> Excuse me. Now this big leaf here, I have got sort of an autumnal... 
I've just ripped the page. Oh no, look. Oh. I can take these out now, I'm not. Oh, I've just ripped it. I'll have to put a little bit of clear. I've got some clear tape. I'll have to use that. Oh, what a pain in the bum. Okay. All right, it can't be helped. It is what it is. Oh, right, these leaves. We, I've got three colours here. I have got... Let me just make sure I've got these right. I've got Chinese orange, yeah. Chinese orange, and then I've got terracotta, and then I've got terracotta light. So they're going to be a very goldeny orange colour. So let's pick a whole leaf. So I'm going in with my Chinese orange. I'm going to put that in. Oh, I'm so gutted, I hate that. Um, I treasure my books, and I hate it when corners get dinged in or... Oh. But it's fine, I've got uh, a clear scotch tape, which is acid free, so that should just cover it. It's only a tiny little bit, look. But it's enough to freak me out, can you see it? Enough to freak me out. <laughs> That's all I need at the moment. Okay. Then we'll go in with that terracotta. Real autumn leaves. But also, although I've coloured that flower kind of real colours, don't forget the story said that she grows all sorts of weird and wonderful plants in her garden to make her potions with. So they don't have to be real. And then we're going in with terracotta light. And I loved that. I just thought it was a beautiful combination together. And like I say, I'm very proud of myself because I haven't practised. All I did was thought, oh, that would look nice. And then picked colours out and tested them on a scrap piece of paper instead of photocopying and colouring the whole page. So I am trying to relax. I'm trying to let up my, my hang-ups. And three years of YouTube, you'd have thought I'd done it by now, but no. Right, so there's that one. Isn't that a cool combination? I love it. I think it's really beautiful. And we might bring that over here to this one. I know they're different leaves, but I think we'll get away with it. So, Chinese orange. And we can bring that down on the stalk there. Like that. And if we make this side darker. Like that. There with our Chinese orange, in with our terracotta. And then we don't have too much fuss and faff going on the page. We've got the same sort of colours mirroring things. And I've got one more combination for this plant, which is really nice. Well, I think so. Not that I'm biased or anything. So we're going to use that same combo for those leaves. And we can bring down that dark Chinese orange down the centre here. Chinese orange. Yes, you are in. There we go. Chinese orange. Bring that down. And then pull down that terracotta as well. There we go. Gorgeous! All right, now this combination <coughs> I'm going to use on these dinky little things over here and it is aubergine, mahogany and magenta. I know, I know. So these little tiny things here. So we're going to squish these three colours in. So aubergine at the bottom. Then we're going to squish in mahogany. Another bug, go away, get off my book, it's already ripped. <laughs> and then we're going to squash in, so that purple's completely different to our hat, uh, magenta. Another cool, comp these, these pencils, honestly, I've come up with some different combinations and I really like them. So, so just to recap, that one is aubergine, 
uh, mahogany. And just make sure you've got enough room for that magenta because it changes that purple tone. I didn't want it to match the hat. I wanted a more pinky colour. Okay, it's going to look gorgeous I think like that. So mushroom, we're going to use these same three colours but we're going to add vermilion, really bright colour. So if we focus in on a sh little mushroom and um, we're going to go around the base with aubergine. Now, these are tiny spaces so we've got to be careful that we can try and get all our colours in. Aubergine, then mahogany. So we start to get redder, we put that in. Then our magenta, again more red. Okay, then we're going to change that up by adding vermilion. There we go. So we've, we're still using the same colours and it's just not that shock of so many different pages, uh, so many different colours throughout the page. Uh, and it should just work, the halloween -y, clashy colours, I love it. Alright, let's have a look at the base. I've got, again, three colours. I know they're squishy, but um, it's worth it. It'll be worth it. So I've got, in order of dark to light, permanent brown, sapia, and the gorgeous old rose. So I'm going to go in on the stalks with sapia. And where am I going to do it? This side here. So that's our darkest for the stalks is sapia. So I'm just going to use the two colours for these. Sapia and old rose. Look at that. What a perfect mushroomy combination. And then at the top here we'll do the same. So sapia in our dark bits. Let me just come in a little bit closer while we do this. Sapia for our dark bit, like that, and then get our old rose in there, love that colour, it's absolutely stunning. And then we'll introduce a little bit of this permanent brown, just over those black lines and in the dark spot, and a little bit more then of sapia. There we go. I love it. I love it. So if we come out and have a look, that's as far as I've planned so far, but that's, that's you know, I've cracked on. I've done well, I think. So we're going to go, I'm going to go off, I'm going to colour those leaves and those ones and those ones and I'll come back and finish the mushrooms and we'll come back and finish the other elements together. I'll see you in a second. Okay, folks, uh, next morning and um, I'm ready to get back to it. I'm absolutely loving how this page is turning out. I'm actually reconsidering whether to even do a background on it because it's I just love it and I don't want to mess it up. So let's get straight back to it. So where should we start? Right, I've got a couple of greens here. I don't, whoops. I don't know if they're going to work. So I'm just going to do it lightly and we'll see. So I've got Terra Verde and I've got Leaf Green Deep for the base of this because I know we've got a green dragon but we've got a lot of sort of very earthy tones going on I don't know we just it might be nice so let's try let's try down the stalk actually I don't want it to be too like the dragon which is why I went with the terra verde because it's a different a different colour I think you know that might work and then we'll brighten it up with a leaf green deep. I think we'll get away with that, folks. So just to add a little bit of that green. So we can do it in the these leaves too, because they're far enough away from our dragon. It's a lovely colour, a little grey green, it's beautiful. I had to squeeze it in somewhere. I'm apologising again. I didn't bring you in, did I? <coughs> So I'm just going to put a little bit of it at the base here. So I think I've got the rest of the colours worked out. And I'm still ad-libbing. I'm still just selecting colours that I think will look nice. I'm making myself very proud today. Small steps, folks. Small steps. 
but it's all part of um, learning to enjoy and trusting yourself, isn't it? Okay. So I can't say anything at the moment, but I may have some really good news that will mean that I'll be much more relaxed and um, much less anxious and be able to continue my uh, YouTube journey because it's my absolute pleasure. It's my my one, well obviously apart from the children and the grandchild and the husband, it's my one real pleasure, you know, my hideaway and my getaway from reality and I love it. So we'll put that in there too, that same combination. I think that will work. Let's go back in with that Terra Verde so that we can really see that dark bit. Okay. We're nearly there, folks, I think. All right, I like that. Yeah, I think that's cool. Okay. Now, the colours that we used for our um, marigold whatever flower I'm going to use <coughs> excuse me I'm going to use again in our little star down here so just as a reminder they were brilliant yellow Naples yellow and Tuscan yellow so I am going to do the center of his little happy face in our darkest color which is Tuscan yellow there we go and then I'm going to bring out Naples yellow and I'm going to fill him in like that and then I'm going to go over with a Tuscan yellow just to brighten him up a bit and then if I decide to do a black background I can bring out that colour there I'm not sure what I wanted to do was do a black background with silver paint splatters on it. That's what I wanted to do. That's the feel. But I don't know. You know, you risk you risk overworking it and spoiling it. Did I tell you those colours? I don't know. Naples yellow, brilliant yellow and Tuscan yellow. They'll be on screen anyway, Lucy. Why are you faffing? Okay. His little clouds. His little clouds of smoke. I've got Venetian blue. And I've got graphite. So, again, fingers crossed, let's hope it works. So, I'm going to go in with the Venetian blue at the base of the cloud. And it's that, uh, we did use it in the hat. It has got a very purpley hue to it. But, we're going to put that graphite grey over it. And I just wanted something sort of soft and... But again, didn't um, didn't introduce another yet another colour. So now we're going in with the graphite, which is a lovely soft grey. Let me just deepen that. There we go, we just deepen that up. And then go back in with our graphite. And leave a little bit of white peeping out the top of his cloud. Or it's not, it's, it's be steam off his nose, won't it? Yeah, I think that'd be cool. Where's the white? Let's add a little bit of white to that. That'll help blend through those colours and push those greys in with that. Yeah, that's cute. Now I'm thinking, what else did I have to do? Oh, I need to do the um, band on the hat. Now I think I'm gonna have that bit silver, like a, a buckle, and the actual back, the band of the hat is gonna be black. So I've got ivory black and I've got cool grey at the moment. So let me just check, ivory black, just look at my thing, ivory black and oh cool grey, where's that? Okay, yeah that'll work. Okay, let's do that. So I'm gonna put I'm just gonna sharpen it. 
the better point. And then we've just got the little bits around the dragon to think about on his little body. I'm thinking orange is what I'm thinking because it will go well with the green. So I'm going in deep with the black and then I'm going to soften it off so that we can introduce that grey. And let's band around here as well. So I'm going to make that dark there. Can you see? Oh, have it yet? Yeah. Make that dark. Careful around those little spines. And then we can soften it out then. Okay, let's switch to that cool grey. The top of the band. And then we'll go back in and deepen it up. But I think that'll work. I think it'll look really cool. I think I'll make that little bit black there as well. There we go. Let's deepen that up with our black. I know it's a very long video, so I really do thank you if you're still watching with me. And then what I might do is after the weekend and I've had the little fella, um, I might um, do the Jasmine Beckett Griffith one, because I know a lot of people wanted that too, so I might do that as a treat to myself and you guys, just for thanking you for all the lovely comments that you left. Right, I'm going to take the white again. And then let's just lighten that and help to blend it. Need a little bit of darker in there. That looks cool. <laughs> the little things, folks. Oh, I do enjoy it. it. Gives me so much pleasure to do this. Especially when, I don't know, I just love the page. Now, I think, let's use the same colours as we've used for the star and the flower for his little spines and his little doodads, whatever they are here. But should we add a brighter orange, I think we might need to. Let's add marigold. So now I have to move all my gubbins out of the way. <laughs> And let's get marigold, which is um, 19 here. Okay. Because that's a really nice bright colour. Oh, cadmium orange deep is quite... Hmm. Let's try... Well, let's try that. I can always add it. I can always make it darker. So, here we go. So I'm going in with marigold... I'm going to make that quite bright, I think. Marigold, and then what's the next colour down is Brilliant Yellow. Ooh, yeah. And then um, a tad of that Naples Yellow. Ooh, and then I'm going to, I'm going to put um, glitter on those. So let's leave it at that. So, Marigold... Brilliant, uh, brilliant yellow and Naples yellow. So I'm going to do the same on this bit, following the dark shadow lines that we've been given. With our first colour. And then, I can't wait, and then you put the stickles over him, he'll be, oh, he'll just be gorgeous. And then it just sort of ties the whole page together. Like I say, we haven't got then a million colours going on. But we have got Halloween colours. And that bit I'm going to make silver. I think I'm just going to use my Uniball Signo pen. I was thinking about, like I say, getting silver paint out. But I haven't decided yet whether I want to put that background in or not. So, now I need to make, if they're in there, I need to make those bits orange, don't I? So we'll do that. And then they'll have to be the usual greens. 
so I'll make that nice and dark in there and in there I think. Okay, and our next colour. And we'll leave a little space for that pale one. And let's take our dragony colours again and we will do, um, let's do those last three. So hooker's green, let's put, yes you can see, let's put that in here. It does look as similar to that flower stem but never mind. I think it still works. Then we'll go in with um, Cadmium Green Pale. And then we'll brighten it up with um, Leaf Green Light. There we go. Ooh. Look at that, and then when all his spines are done in those colours, let's do a spine quick. I know we're, I'm running out of time fast here, but we'll do a spine on him. There we go. I mean, I suppose we could have done them green, but it's just, you know, one of those things. Let's try this little bit over here. I need to cover that green where I went over there. Yeah, I like it. I like it, folks. So, I'm going to take my... Let's do it while I'm on camera. And then I can. it will be dry when we come back. My Uniball Signal. I absolutely adore this one. This is just silver. Um, yeah, it just says uh, Pigment Ink Silver. Uniball Signal. And I store it upside down so it's in a little thing, so it stays upside down so it flows better. And I'm going to do that buckle in silver. And then that way if I do decide to put a black background in, the buckle will make sense because I'll splatter, cover this bit and splatter it with silver paint for stars. I'll let that dry, I might need to go back over it. So, I'm going to go off and colour in all those spines and finish the little puffs of cloud and I will decide whether we're going to leave it there, well obviously we're going to add stickles, but whether we leave it there or I do do a back black background. So if you'll give me two seconds and then I'll join you back. Okay, time to crack out the diamond stickles. Right, I'm not going to put a background in. I was going to do, like I said, I was going to tape it off so I've got a nice clean board around it, do it black, cover the image and do some um, silver paint splatters for stars because it is the end of the day. And then I could have brought out like the beams of light from the little star. You tell me in the comments, do you think it would look better with the black background and the, and the silver paint splatters or left alone because sometimes I overdo things and then I spoil it so, but if you um, if you'd want to see that black background done I'll do it and then I'll show you in a finished pages video because we've got I've got a pile that I don't think I've done one since May finished pages and as you know I've just been colouring on the channel so um, I have got no, I don't think I've even got one secret page. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to stickleize our little fella. Now what I did was put a little bit of marigold on the eyelid, just because. Um, and I was going to put a little bit of marigold on the scales, but again, I'm frightened of overdoing it. So I'm going to... I'm going to diamond stickle the orangey bits here. And that should, because it's got like, diamond stickles has got flecks of gold in it, so it should really bring that out. So, I hope the camera picks, the, oh, the light, the new light picks up this shimmer in it. Oh, it does, yeah, look at that. 
glittery goodness. And then we're going to put a little bit on the eyelid because I can't leave things alone. <laughs> Obviously on our little star, I need to be careful in case you guys want me to do the black background. I'll just Posca it, it will just be bordered with Posca and then a thin um, dash of, of um, silver paint like stars and I'll splatter it on once I've covered the image. That way my little wispy clouds wouldn't have that black outline, they would look like they stand out, you get what I mean? So I've done there, I've done there, let's do his little spines. I've thoroughly enjoyed this page, thank you everyone for choosing it because um, it is a really, really special little book, it really is. Okay. And then I might, like I say, get on to the Jasmine Beckett Griffith one if if everybody would like to see it. Because um, I know I definitely would like to colour that. It was Queen of Halloween, wasn't it, the picture I liked, I think. It's a big full page. And it's a gorgeous book with gorgeous paper. Let's give his tail some. I can't stop, see? Once I get the diamond stickles out, that's it. Everything has to be sticklified. Sticklified. Or glitterified. Now, anything else? Oh, what about his little clouds? What about his little smoke clouds? Let's put a little bit around the base of them. That way, if I do decide to put um, the black background on, or you decide that I should put the black background on, they'll really stand out. See my little hand tremor there? It's determined that I'm going to ruin this page. <laughs> okay, we just put a little bit around the darkest bit at the bottom. So I'm just going round it and then I spread it out. There we go. And we can put even over that little shiny silver bit there. There. Right, now step away Lucy, for goodness sake. <laughs> do you do that with your page? Do you just keep going and fiddling and then you end up like, oh I wish I had done that. Okay, let me see if I can get you this sparkle. If I... No, I can't pick it up now. I did earlier. It might be easier when it's dry, but... I don't know if you're picking that up or not, but... What was that? It's alright, it was a writing pencil, not one of my castle arts. So, there we are. You let me know, if you would, please, whether you'd like to see it finished with the black background and the splatter, I'll go with the majority again. Um, I, I love this page, I do, and I, just because I'm scared to do it, that um, I won't. But if you guys think, yes, Lucy, it absolutely would look better with a black sky and the, um, the metallic paints that I've got, you know, the, from the art spirits, that true silver that is just really stands out. Um, I would thin that out and splatter silver stars on it so it's like magical background. But you let me know. You guys might think, you know, like I do, Lucy, step away and leave it alone before you ruin it. So thank you so much for watching. I really, really enjoyed it. And um, God willing, I'll be able to come back and bring you the Jasmine Beckett Griffith Queen of Halloween page. Um, so, so until we meet again in the very near future, please leave me your comments. Have yourselves a wonderful weekend and I'll see you very soon. Take care, my lovely friends. Bye bye.